Hi there. So today I want to talk about open source versus closed source foundation models for AI. You may have seen this story going around about Google Insider saying that these huge kind of challenges to Google because of open source large language models. It goes as far as saying we have no moat and neither does open AI where a moat is this sort of economic barrier that allows a business to generate sustained long term value. I've been thinking about this question since Stable Diffusion came out last summer. Now this story has been a big one. It's been going around the internet. I keep getting WhatsApp messages from friends about it. And I'll just summarise the key observations this person makes. There are many. Uh, and if you go into the, uh, the notes, you'll get the link to it. So the first is that you know, he makes a point that the gap between the state of the art, which is currently GPT-4, and open source models is changing really quickly. Essentially, a $100 to train 13 billion parameter open source model is competing with the 540 billion parameter $10 million to train Google high-end models. The second is that the open source community has solved a lot of the scaling problems through a whole range of optimizations. And you can take a look at some of the work that Mosaic ML is doing, they've demonstrated that they can train a stable diffusion model, which is not a large language model, for six times cheaper than Stability was doing it in the first instances. And then the third is just about the dynamic of the open source market, which is that there are lots and lots of different players who are interacting with uh, each other, and that creates a huge rate of iteration. There are lots of developers who are contributing, and that means much, much faster rate of learning. You'll remember that learning is a key factor in the exponential age in terms of driving down cost or improving price performance. So potentially open source models could learn and iterate far faster than closed source ones. And closed source ones might start to look like the sort of old monoliths of the past. And then this inside from Google makes a final point, which is really about organizational culture and how people are aligned, what they think of success being. And he says, focusing on maintaining some of the largest models on the planet actually puts us, that is Google, at a disadvantage. So this is a quite an important question. Trivially, it's about the impact of investment in firms building closed source models. Think of Google and OpenAI, and they would bother you if you're an investor in those companies in some sense. But actually, I think it also helps us understand what the shape of the internet will take and what kind of public goods might be created. And I think that's quite interesting. Powerful closed source models would push us towards a choke point metered future internet. Essentially, everything that you needed to do would have to go past the toll gate and a fraction of a penny would be taken from you. Whereas widespread open source models imply a more kind of public goodsy like structure of the type that the internet was before Web 2.0 business models took hold. So I've been thinking about this question for a while. And in the last few days, I've spoken to Emad Mostak from Stability and Jan LeCun from Meta and a bunch of other people who are developing these things. And I've been thinking about open source and public goods for about two decades. What I would like to do now is just step you through my thinking.